the public hearing of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. It is June 1st, 2021. It is 6.30 p.m. Call this public hearing to order. Order business is Ordinance 2021-13, an ordinance of the City of Laverne, Tennessee, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. At this point, I want to welcome anybody up to the podium who would like to speak on the budget. Please come forward, state your name and address, and you can speak to the board. Anyone would like to come forward? Officer Call, would you please check outside to see if anybody would like to speak on the budget? Please. No? Again, podium's open if anyone would like to speak on the budget. Seeing no one, I will call the public hearing to a close and we will reconvene at 645 for the Citizens Forum. Good evening and welcome to the Citizens Forum. Um, it is 645. And uh, we do have people signed up, so each person will be asked to come forward, state your name and address for the record. At that point, you will have three minutes to speak to the board. Uh, first, we have Josh Grayson. Yeah. Officer Call. Josh Grayson. Yes. Josh Grayson. Sir, if you'd please come to the, uh, to the podium and state your name and address for the record. You have uh, three minutes. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone here. Uh, attending, uh, my name is Josh Grayson. I'm currently living at 171 uh, Dobson Knob Trail. Uh, it's Laverne, but somehow it keeps coming up in Owensville. Don't know how, but it's the ridge right across uh, from Rock Springs Elementary. And I actually uh, just purchased property, building a home right there on Blair Road. And... That's kind of how I got involved with uh, everything that seems to be going on, uh, good, positive, or negative. So I thought I'd just come here and uh, say my piece. Uh, I've lived here now in Nashville for, wow, 17 years. Uh, I'm 40 years old now. I, I started out, served my country in the Marine Corps, uh, four years active duty. And this is actually the first time that I've ever spoken up in any kind of uh, political government form. Uh, forum, uh, city council, what have you. And I just wanted to come here and say, uh, you know, I, I personally know the benefits of uh, what's going to be built, what's going to be done. I've done a lot of research. Uh, when it first started off, I was adamantly opposed to it uh, and uh, even signed the petition, even, even wrote a comment on the petition. And then I started, took a step back, started doing my own research, started looking at everything and uh, realized that it's going to be an amazing thing for the city in many ways. So the only thing I'm going to say here tonight uh, is for the people that are opposed to it. I totally understand it. I was on that side of the fence. And I just wanted to tell them and get out there in the open that I really think that you need to talk to your leading voices that have given you the information about what's going on in a negative light and really take a step back and do your research because uh, some of those people aren't servicing you and aren't giving you the information and aren't doing what they should do. In fact, some of those people have taken it upon themselves to seek to develop their own land for developments that are way uh, opposite spectrum of what's being done. I personally love all the contractual guarantees that are guaranteed in this contract, in this development, everything that's going on, all the, all the stuff that they, the city wants them to do and, and wants to make it better for the development for the city. And to me, that's the most important thing. The land is already zoned R1, so if this falls through, if for some reason, the owner could sell it, and then any other development could go in there with no restrictions, nothing, no contractual obligations, no nothing. They can build whatever houses they want, how they want, no road improvements, nothing to help traffic, nothing to help anything going on, and that's why I wanted to come here, give my support for it, let the people know that... Uh, I am invested in this simply because I live right across the street and going not only now, but even closer here within the next uh, 30 days. So I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for 
let me come here and speak. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever spoken in a public forum, and I really appreciate you guys letting me say my piece. And again, this is the great thing about government. Everyone has opinion, right or wrong, but this is why we're here, so we can discuss and we can find a happy medium for everybody. Again, thank you guys very much. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Eric Tudobaney. Um, for the record, my name is Eric Tutabene. I live at 707 Brushy Ridge Drive in Laverne, Tennessee. Um, the economic benefits of this development have been well discussed. Um, the impact it will have as far as bringing in new tax dollars is well known. Approximately, I heard a conservative estimate of around $5 million with property taxes and sales tax. Um, so, from an economic point of view, I'm in favor of this, but I'd like to speak more on a personal level as to why I'm in favor of this. Uh, it was October of 2000, or 2004 that my family, my wife and two daughters, and I myself moved here to Laverne nearly 17 years ago. And in December, December 13th, my wife was in a near-fatal car accident because the intersection that leads from Walden Road you know, into Woodland Hills, that intersection, is one of the most dangerous intersections in all of Laverne. At the time, Sherry Green, she was the mayor. Well, I should back up. I went, I got a phone call at my job telling me my wife was just in a car accident and she's in the hospital with my daughter. It was a little frightening at the time. So I rushed over there, and thankfully she's all right. No major damage. My car was totaled, though. So I talked to Sherry. I talked to the, the leadership back then, and they said that that's a, a common occurrence, that cars get into terrible accidents there. And that was my introduction to living here in Laverne. So to the leadership's credit at the time, they cut down several of the trees that were at that intersection, and they did some landscaping and pulled it back to make the view to the left, you know, down Walden Road, a little bit more clear. But it's still quite a dangerous, it can be quite a dangerous intersection. So from a personal level, I'm all for the widening of Walden Road, and for 17 years I've been all for the widening of Walden Road because the residents of Woodland Hills deserve to have a safe entry on to Walden Road. So from the economic point of view, I'm all in favor of it. Property values will go up, more shopping convenience for the residents and all around. But from just a safety's point of view, I'm 100% for it because I believe the residents of Woodland Hills deserve that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Juliet Tutobaini. Thank you, elected officials, and that was my husband. I'm Juliet Tutobaini. I live at 707 Brushy Ridge Drive in Laverne. And I just want to thank you all for the hard work you put into finding something not only gorgeous, because I actually sat down with BRS, because I needed to know what's happening. I have friends that have signs and friends that don't have signs. I needed to know what the truth of this is. I need to know the right thing to do for my children and grandchildren, the next generation. And so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wow, who is not informed here? This is gorgeous, beautiful with green spaces. We could have little tiny parks and gorgeous, beautiful homes for our elderly that's 100% maintained. I would love to move there. And so we would actually have revenue with a commercial there 
where we would have some revenue so that you guys that we elected have something to work with to improve our schools, roads, our, our, our uh, law enforcement. We are needing that, hello? And we totally voted for you guys to help us do this, to find good sources of income. And now we have this awesome opportunity. And we're opposing it? After I found out, I'm telling my friends with signs. And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Why aren't they getting the proper information? So yeah, I'm concerned. Yeah, this is important. And if you don't want this, you're basically helping us get more taxes to pay for the things we need done. And that isn't really great, folks. Hello. So thank you, Jason. Thank you, whoever of you are in support of this. And I get no wanting change. I don't like change either. I moved from LA, raised my kids in Laverne because I didn't like change. But change is here. It's going to happen. Let's choose something excellent for Laverne because we deserve it. And if we don't, they're going to swallow us up like they already are in Smyrna, uh, Nolensville, everywhere else, and we're just going to get swallowed up more. And it's going to happen. We're going to have to change or our taxes go up again. Thank you, whoever wants taxes. I thank don't. You, so thank, thank you. you. Next, we have Josh Orman. How are y'all? My name is Josh Orman. I live at 3012 Ranch Road in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Uh, my family, <clears throat> excuse me, is the owner of 823 Walden Road right there in Laverne across from Blair Road. That is where the commercial part of this development is supposed to go. Um, I just wanted to come up here and acknowledge that the family fully supports that. Um, my late father and uncle went into agreement with the current developers on this property. And uh, I'm gonna see through it that hopefully things get done the right way and that things do get done for the, the betterment of the property. The property has sat there since 2004 um, no one has lived there. We've basically been paying taxes on it since. Um, you know, I'm not a public speaker in any way, um, but I do believe that this development is the, the right way to go. I believe that they've done everything that the citizens who oppose this wanted done. Um, they've taken the townhouses out. They're fixing the roads. They're doing all kinds of things, in my understanding, and I think that's important. I think that they're working with everybody as well as the city to get this done. And I just hope that everybody has an open mind. Um, as the landowner, I know there's people that oppose it, but we as citizens of the United States have a right to sell our property. Um, with that comes, you know, with this development, the, the residential part comes a lot better taxes for the police department, the fire department, the money goes to them, which is dire needed. Um, I was a police officer in the city of Mount Juliet for 13 years. I know what it's like to see a city grow. I know what it's like to see it go from nothing to what the city of Mount Juliet is now. They have top-notch equipment, they have top-notch officers, they have top-notch fire equipment, and they're a great city. I believe Laverne can do the same. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Jim McFarlane. Jim McFarland, 980 Battle Road. Uh, you know, I've spoke two or three times. Uh, I feel like the McFarland family's been very good to the city of Laverne. Uh, anytime we've ever been asked to step up and do something for the community, we always have. And um, I'd like to thank uh, the mayor and the board for the consideration and support of the project, which personal opinion, I think it's a good project and it's good for, for everyone. Um, you know, I've got several things that I could say in three minutes to say them, but um, uh, as 
Josh said uh, Waldron Road is a dangerous road, and I think this is going to help fix it. And um, gosh, I don't know. It's I, I don't understand the opposition. Uh, I know I've tried to farm it these years and have, and it's I'm farming in the city now, and it's it's, it's not working. Uh, I'm having to carry liability policies and things like that, and it's just it's just not feasible anymore to do that. I, I hate it, but it, it's just not feasible. Um, I, I guess that's about all I've got to say this evening. I think it's a good idea, and it's it's going to be good for for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Randy Thomas. I appreciate it. Um, Randy Thomas, 930 Walden Road. I live right across from the uh, development, and I appreciate what y'all are doing because nobody gets to see the wrecks that I get to see constantly up and down Walden Road, Lake Road, in the first curve, head-on collisions all the time. In the S curve there at the school, it's terrible. I know you know that from the guardrails you have to put back. And I think this is a good thing, and I appreciate everything y'all are doing. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Becky Pollock. Becky Pollock, 8041 Burntwood Drive. I'm opposed to this uh, rezoning of anything off Blair Road until the until the road improvements get in place and uh, the infrastructure is improved on that side of town. I'm opposed to rezoning anything, and we don't know. Uh, you know, the Portico uh, project had been rezoned by the same people that are here tonight, and they're going back to the city of uh, Smyrna asking for a uh, further density. Um, uh, so, I mean, you know, they're going to do the same here. I ask that you oppose this project. Thank you. Next, we have William Stack. Hi, my name is William Stack. I moved my family to 786 Walnut Ridge Drive in Laverne in February of 1990. That was 30 plus years ago. I'm a longtime resident. I do understand growth and change in Laverne. Even though this process has been long and arduous, I truly want to believe the real world facts associated with this ill-conceived rezoning, rezoning will prevail. Who does this ill-conceived rezoning help? Does it help the developers? Yes, it does. Does it help the citizens of Laverne? There's an overwhelming negative public reaction to it that says it won't. Does it reduce crime in our area? No, it increases it. Does it reduce traffic in our area? No, it does not. Does it make it safer in the area? No, it does not. Does it get natural gas to our subdivision that in 30 years we haven't gotten yet, that I've asked every person running for mayor why they can't do it? It doesn't do that. Does it help any of the neighborhoods anywhere near it? It, it doesn't. Does it help the financial situation for the city of Laverne? It's a complicated question with a simple answer. Several people over the last year have given um, financial statements as to the real money the city's gonna get from the commercial, the commercial part of this program, and it doesn't show it. It's been shown long-term money the city will gain versus the total expenses for the city is a loser to the city. Therefore, it does not and moves to the no column. So the no column versus the yes column speaks volumes. Why again are we trying to move ahead with this? On the campaign trail, questions were asked specifically about this potential rezoning, and some candidates told us where they stood. Now they're in office. On the campaign trail, <clears throat> excuse me, it's different, why? Common explanations include like, I was opposed to it because of this and that and the other. I really wasn't opposed to it overall. Mayors and older people are the stewards of the city entrusted by citizens to maintain our city. Sometimes this means the stewards of our city need to put their personal aspirations aside and be responsible to the constituency. Too often people get tangled up with a sh bright, shiny new idea that is really 
just a buffed out old idea with new paint job. If the old idea was bad, the new one's still bad. The Planning Commission's job is to be the gatekeepers, <clears throat> excuse me, of managing change in the city. It's generally accepted if you can't meet the minimum requirements to get a recommendation from the Planning Commission, your project won't go forward. They help keep the city out of trouble. They provide continuity year after year to keep the city out of litigation. It's not personal, it's business. Words spoken here. The business of the city government isn't simple, it's complex. If you take, go, don't take into account all aspects of the project, you have failed at business. Governance is personal business. I think it's now as simple as winning and losing. Sir, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you didn't uh, uh, state your address. He, he did. He, it's it's 786 Walnut Ridge Drive. I'm about 450 feet from the Southern Ridge. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Sue Miner. My name is Sue Miner, and I live at 780 Walnut Ridge Drive, Laverne, Tennessee. My name is Sue Miner, and I am opposed to the rezoning of the McFarland property for the Arbor Ridge development. Last Thursday night, you, our elected representatives, announced your intentions to vote yes to the rezoning of this, of this uh, McFarland property. In doing so, you have communicated your failure to be representatives of the very people who elected you to the positions that you hold here tonight. Alderman, no. Your words were particularly offensive to me when you said, this is not personal, this is just business. Mr. No, you are very wrong. This is personal. This is very personal to a whole lot of people that you have chosen to ignore and disrespect. The very fact that you said those words out loud shows a lack of compassion, leadership, and understanding that an elected alderman should have for his constituents. You have all failed <clears throat> to understand that we chose to live in this part of Laverne, some of us for generations. My husband and I have lived in Walnut Ridge Estates for 34 years. We raised our son there and chose to spend our retirement years there. We've paid our taxes and have been viable citizens of this community. How dare you say this isn't personal? My colleagues and I have spoken at length about the various reasons why this rezoning and development is not the right fit for the South Waldron community. We have tried to remind you to not make the same mistakes that previous administrations have made, squandering the last vast natural resource of residential living in Laverne in favor of high density housing, traffic problems, increased crime, light pollution, <clears throat> unwanted commercial, commercial units, and yes, another unneeded Laverne gas station. The Waldron Road corridor that could have been used for much needed revenue for the city was wasted on the shiny objects of industrial businesses and unsightly warehouses. The well-traveled Murfreesboro Road retail corridor that should have been Laverne's, <coughs> excuse me, uh, revenue bonanza was squandered years ago on the requisite allotment of rundown retail stores and used car lots. Why not use the city's revenues to promote Murfreesboro Road for the shopping mecca that it could be rather than plunking down an unwanted and unwarranted commercial development in the quiet residential area south of Waldron? In closing, it is clear that the Arbor Ridge development with all of its secrets, half-truths, and community distrust is not the development best suited for our community or the city of Laverne. With so much on the line for our community, our property values, our safety, our schools, and yes, our very way of life, I ask all of you to carefully reconsider your announced positions on this matter. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please quiet in the room. Next we have Steve McGill. Steve McGill, 177 Blair Road, Laverne, Tennessee. As I watched last week's workshop meeting, I was so utterly disappointed in what I heard. I would have said I wasn't surprised, but I have to admit I really was. I didn't think the PC recommendation would have absolutely zero impact. I thought you would have at least wrestled with it, but it was clear the die was already cast. Mr. No, I was surprised how angry you were. If you haven't, go back and review the video and see if that was really your intent. I want to remind you that we elected you to represent us not to act as our daddy, 
and scold us as misbehaving children. I have a couple of corrections I'd like to get in the record. You can rewrite history however it helps you to sleep at night, but you know I was opposed to any rezoning of this property. We never simply discussed townhomes. You could have at any point told me you supported retail and small lots, and you didn't. You know what impression you left me with. Your walnut comparison is not anything like this situation. You lived one block from Murfreesboro Road. We specifically chose not to live one block from a major corridor. We moved here from Bell Road and Antioch. With Walmart, the city had landed a well and needed a pond to place it in. Here, they're building a pond miles from the ocean to place fish they haven't even caught or even identified. Josh Grayson does not live on Blair Road. Maybe he will in the future if he finishes his house. But even when he does, his opinion has no more weight than the 701 who have signed a petition against this. You mentioned there was a hullabaloo about the reimbursement of impact fees, and now the developer is actually paying 1.3 million over in impact fees. Why do you think this happened? You were absolutely okay with the prior arrangement, but not for our hullabaloo, the developer would have paid no impact taxes. $68 million of sales revenue, not tax revenue, is what is leaked. That's a huge difference. And did you look at the categories of that leakage? What percentage will possibly be captured in this strip center? Mr. McFarland is entitled to sell his land. No one is trying to stop him, as you indicated. He's not entitled to a zoning change. Zoning either matters or it doesn't. Finally, your introduction of class warfare into this discussion was sad and surprising. I'd have to say you're more of a politician than I ever suspected. Jason. At any point, you could have had a three scenario range of projections prepared for tax revenue, low, medium, and high. Why didn't you? Are you scared of the low projection? Why does retail have to be coupled with higher density housing? And please don't lecture me on what higher density means. When you have smaller lots than a mobile home park, I'm calling that high density. It was clear from the emails from the BRS attorney that the, this deal had the votes. It absolutely would not have mattered what the facts were they had the votes. Mr. Coates, if a man beats his wife five days a week and the judge says he must stop and only beat her two days a week, he has compromised. He wanted to beat her five days, but she's still getting beat two days. Not much of a compromise for her, is it? Thank you, sir. Next, we have Weston Gentry. Weston Gentry, 1516 Cherry Cherrybrook Drive. To set the record straight for those that have voted for this, this includes no road improvements other than in phase four when Mr. Hahn is to include turn lanes on Blair and Waldron, which we discussed later. At the 525 PC meeting, Alderman Coates emphasized that compromise is where it needs to be. This may be true from BRS and the city. However, the community perspective, the compromise is not where it needs to be. The community has had to fight for every opportunity to speak with meeting structure to restrict public input. Elected officials represent the people, and the amount of condescending speech by Bowman at the last workshop was repulsive. A public scolding of constituents has no place when valid concerns are being raised. I urge you to take the recommendation from the Planning Commission and vote no or defer on this rezoning. Board members have expressed they will vote in the best interest of the city as a whole, but you aren't even interested in studying how much revenue could be generated to help them. Think about all those in Laverne who it'll affect most. It doesn't affect them all equally. Uh, so prior to this meeting, the loan, with the lone exception of Mr. Holiday last week, not one person had public, publicly spoken in favor of this development outside those involved with the actual transaction. In the May 27th BOMA workshop, a planning commissioner stated that infrastructure does not typically go ahead of the need. Typically, the need happens, then the infrastructure is improved, and the need is certainly present. And this development shows a pathway of improving the infrastructure, end quote. Our bridge does not improve the infrastructure outside the development itself and will leach resources from the surrounding area. The Planning Commission acknowledges the need for improvements is already present, yet four of you have stated you are willing to exacerbate this by approving rezoning, neglecting a responsibility for responsible growth. A few quick hitting points. The city has res assumed responsibility for the S-curve improvements. What provisions are in place to guarantee these improvements are completed prior to occupancy of the units in phase one, a prior sticking point? On page 14 of the most recent book, it states that the improvements to the intersection of Waldron and Blair, including turn lanes on both sides, will be completed in conjunction with the development of commercial and retail on the western side of Waldron Road. 
How do these improvements coincide with the city plans for Waldron Road improvements? Mayor Cole said, I just emphasize this is not high density. However, when you break it down by phase, this density is much higher than the surrounding communities. Phase one, 2.24 eight units per acre, palatable. Phase two, 5.22, phase three, 9.65, and phase four, 59.41, although there's an error in the book because this has no residential in phase four. Alderman No represents the 68 million in leakage in the one mile gap analysis from Waldron Road and Blair Road, yet the only commercial specifically addressed in this plan only accounts for 13,989,000, .9, and that number is different than what was represented that Steve McGill already mentioned. It's yet to be addressed while Mr. Hahn's development is being tied into the Arbor Ridge development. If this is uh, legal and no problem, please let us know. It's been asked multiple times. So please send this back to the Planning Commission, develop a plan. If you want commercial, zone the corners for commercial, leave the rest R1. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. And with that, it is 7.15. So we will move into the- uh, If I make a motion to expand the rules to let some of the people who want to speak to speak? Well, I believe it was under your administration, you set up the 30 minutes and uh, limit and we're not under regular Roberts rules here. Thank you, sir. So moving on to the Board of Mayor and Alderman agenda. Um, call the meeting to order. The prayer will be by Alderman Waldron, the Pledge of Allegiance by Alderwoman Honeycutt. If everyone would please stand for the prayer and the pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help Give us the guidance and the wisdom to do the right thing for, the, for our neighbors. Pray for our fi fine men and women that is keeping our, all of us safe here and around the world. Give help to the need, to the people who have suffered losses. Look over us and sh show us the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Everyone face the flag. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business, approve the minutes from the uh, May 4th, 2021 regular meeting. Motion to accept the minutes as submitted. A motion to accept as submitted from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes passed. Moving on to presentations. Is Zachary Clary and Jeffrey Pendergrass here? If so, could y'all please come up? Like you just got up. All right. Let's pull this a little bit closer. The city of Laverne would like to recognize both of you gentlemen uh, for your hard work and dedication to your journey to becoming Eagle Scouts and helping with outstanding, uh, with outside painting, stream cleaning, um, and stream cleaning at your church. Being an Eagle Scout takes a lot of dedication, a lot of effort. So I, I want to commend you both for that. Um, you each have a certificate of recognition from the city. And I also wanted to give you each one of our challenge points. <coughs> so, Zachary, and then Jeffrey. Can we give them all a round of applause? of 
examples of, of youth in our community. So congratulations, young man. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And then, Officer Call, do we have our state representatives here? Okay. You can send them in as well. Chief Davis, if you'd join me for this. Officer Call, if you could also send in Officer Darby. Good evening, I'm Dawn White, and I'm here to represent the state of Tennessee and honor um, the canine that lost his life uh, in service tonight with the Darby family. I know Jock was part of your family and you lost a member of your family. I know six years you trained him, you were with him, he went home with you, he probably saw your son grow up and was just a part of your family. And I know um, he was part of the Laverne Police um, office um, as well uh, because he was very trained and you know uh, served and did a wonderful job for the community so uh, the state of Tennessee wanted to recognize um, Jock and of course your family and your service to the K-9 unit as well and it is signed by um, Speaker Randy McNally, Speaker Cameron Sexton, and Governor Bill Lee, along with our delegation as well. So thank you for your service to all the men and women who serve at the Laverne Police. Thank you for your service and for the K-9 unit. Thank you so much. What you do for the community is valuable, and we could never thank you enough for everything that you've done. Thank you. Moving on to department reports, Chief Beasley with the fire department. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. I trust that as monthly reports got to you as normal. Uh, average response times are still under the national average and our runs are on par just a little bit less than what we were this time last year. but. That fluctuates from month to month. Do y'all have any questions regarding that? Does anyone have any questions? Chief, I do have one comment. I'm yes, sir. need you to work with your staff and teach them how to pitch like you because uh, you've got a heck of an arm on you from the uh, block party. Well, I'm an old, old older fellow and some of it wanes a little bit, but some things come back. When it's an easy target, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn coach, you hear that comment against you. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm taking note of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Moving on to the police department. Chief Davis. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Alderman, uh, you have your monthly uh, crime summary for the police department. Uh, one of the things I want to point out uh, we did have 13 burglaries from a uh, vehicle this month, uh, which is still up for us. But overall, there's still a 21% uh, decrease in, in that particular crime. Um, also, all 13 of these vehicles were left unlocked, and a total of five vehicle, uh, excuse me, five weapons were stolen from the vehicles. Um, 
if I can offer a reminder, I will remind everyone to uh, make sure that they take their valuables out of the car, especially weapons, and make sure that they uh, lock the vehicles every night. Does anyone have any, any questions? questions? Uh, Chief David, do you uh, see that the, the, the car break-ins is maybe due of the, the warm weather and the schools being out? Um, I, I would say that, sir, but it's, it's been every month. Um, I think the pandemic uh, has a lot to do with that. Uh, people uh, needing money and, and different items that they can pawn to survive, basically. So we need to emphasize people, please don't leave the keys in the car. Yes, uh, we've been stressing um, pretty often, uh, every night, nine o'clock, check, check your cars, make sure you lock your doors, and we continue to do that. Uh, just make sure, even though you may think you locked it, just check it again, just to make sure you lock it. Uh, like myself, I, I click it till I hear a beep that lets me know that I locked it. I just heard on the news before I come down here that I think someone swiped a, a Montgomery County uh, uh, police car today because I, probably the keys were left in it. So that, yes. that's uh, something that everybody needs to be aware of. Yeah, that's that's something that uh, actually becoming pretty common that uh, we will put uh, safety measures in place the way that won't happen to us. Hopefully it won't happen. Thank we'll see. Yeah. Chief, how many vehicles have y'all been able to recover? Uh, this month we've recovered, uh, if I can have a second, We have recovered six vehicles for a total of 33 vehicles this year that we've covered, recovered. And I, I see that number uh, increasing in the near future with some other projects that we have that's ongoing. With regards to, uh, to weapons stolen from these vehicles, have y'all recovered any from that? Um, to my knowledge, I, I, don't, I don't think so right now. Um, only way that we'll get a weapon if it's been pawned or something like that, but most of the time it's used for for further crime down the road, and we'll get it if it's uh, recovered in a scene of a crime or something of that nature. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you chief. Moving on to Parks and Recreation Department, Mr. David McGowan. Mayor, Vice Mayor Board, thank you. You guys have the numbers for the month for the parks. Um, total help desk ticket, 61 on the maintenance side. 485 and a half hours devoted to that. Um, some of the projects, library built a wall for the kiosk. Um, HR office did some rehab in there, did some rehab in the admin assistant office. Past events, senior center yard sale, uh, movies in the park, farmer's market opening day and the block party. Some of our upcoming events, uh, January, June the 11th, movies in the park, Tom and Jerry. July 4th, Independence Day celebration. See some of our meetings, Senior Center Advisory, June 17th, June 21st, Parks and Rec, June 21st, Greenway. Um, July 4th, it's gonna take place on our football field. Gates open at five, music starts at six, fireworks at dark. Food vendors um, will probably be on site approximately five at this time. Um, bring your chairs and blankets. No personal fireworks are allowed. Um, we would like to thank for the block party, Club Knockout for volunteering, you three guys for getting in the Duncan booth. Um, that was a big hit. I know that's hard on y'all. Um, definitely want, wouldn't want to do it. I know Bruce doesn't want to do it. So I think we're gonna pass on our invitation. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, for the movies in the park, the upcoming one with Tom and Jerry. When yes, is that? Uh, what time is that? That will start at dark. We're anticipating 7:45 to 8 o'clock. The further it gets in the summer hours, that may that may be pushed back a little bit. And then, who do we have playing for uh, our Independence Day celebration? Um, July 4th, we have Mixtape. It's an 80s tribute band. They will go on at 6 o'clock. Um, this year, we're going to do a little something different in some of the intermissions. We're going to try to give away some door prizes. So uh, we'll wait and announce those a little bit later. But you will have, as people come through, they'll get a raffle ticket, and then we'll put it in a pot and pull out some numbers. Any other questions, comments? Just another busy sum? Yes, sir. We're looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you, you guys. 
Moving on to finance department, Ms. Phyllis Rogers. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. In the packet tonight, you've got your financial report for the up through the end of April, for which is 10 months into our fiscal year. Um, we're still holding very strong in our sales tax, as you'll see in your report. Um, State Street aid is, uh, expenses are a little bit over compared to revenues. Uh, stormwater expenses are a little bit over. Uh, and water and sewer fund, uh, revenues are, have exceeded expenses. In the second page, you've got your balances in our various bank accounts. And in the third page, is comparison to prior year with our revenues being up about 3.7 million and our expenses being down about 3.9 million. And our water sewer fund, uh, revenues are up 345 and expenses are up about 253. And in our, sorry about that. Um, and then our total uh, tap fees are up about uh, almost $6,000. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the library, Ms. Donna B. Bow. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, good evening. For the month of May, the attendance in our library for 24 days was 3,120. Our daily average was 130. We circulated 2,662 items. We issued 69 new patron cards, and our computer usage was 1,619. We're beginning to see those numbers rise a little bit, and that's very exciting for us. What I'd like to share with you very quickly tonight is our summer reading 2021. Tales and Tales. We are going to start with our drive through kickoff in our library parking lot that will be Saturday, June the 5th, starting at 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Our Tales and Tales summer reading program is for everyone, birth to ages 99 plus. The drive through library parking lot, so drive through the library parking lot on Saturday and you will receive your summer reading bag and inside of it will be some goodies and also uh, information on how you can participate in this year's program. It will be a little different than in programs that we've had in the past, but we think it will still be just as much fun and as exciting and keeping the kids reading throughout the summer. That's our goal. If you cannot make it to the drive through event on Saturday, no worries at all. We will continue to hand out the bags daily at the circulation and children's desk while supplies last. Now this program begins June 5th and will continue through July 17th. Do you have any questions? Donna, I've got one question that's library related but not about the summer reading. Uh, of course, we've been working with uh, Representative Sparks and Director Hogan on a driver's license kiosk at the library. Correct. Has there been any, been any update as to when they're going to deliver that? No. The last update I received was, I think it was a joint email, that they would be contacting me soon with a date for to come in and coordinate a date to install the kiosk, and I have not heard from them. Uh, at that time, it sounded like it would be fairly soon. So what I can do is I can reach out to uh, the person that had sent me the email and see if we have a date. Okay, thank you. And we've, we've gotten everything uh, situated on our end and short up ready to go for them. We, we are ready, really appreciate Parks and Rec. Uh, Jonathan especially came in and he installed a wall that he had uh, stained. It looks marvelous. This way it will separate from our YA books to where the kiosk is gonna be, give a little bit more privacy and yet it's still open. And so that really helped. Glenn and I just coordinated today. We're going to be moving five of our YA computers, but we already have a place that we know they're going to go to. And so we'll be doing that this week or early part of next week, just in preparation. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Water treatment plant. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board. During the month of May, uh, Laverne Water Treatment Plant treated 126.984 million gallons <coughs> of J. Percy Priest Lake water and delivered 108.83 million gallons. 
that equates to 4.379 million gallons per day treated and 3.511 million gallons per day delivered to the community. In the month of May, the leaky valve for the Paul unit was repaired and the unit is in position to run. Inframark has reached out to the state a second time in regards to uh, which samples and at what frequency uh, the samples need to be taken before the Paul unit is put in uh, service. We actually received a response today that is currently under review. Uh, in the beginning of the month, plant personnel performed a flow test on the new side of the plant, uh, like the old side of the plant that we did last month in April. We started on May 4th at about 3.4 million gallons per day. We were able to take the old side off completely and bump up flow up to about 4.3 MGD was still getting filter runs at about 24 hours a day or above uh, 24 hours a day. That's kind of our baseline. Uh, anything below that is inefficient. So we didn't try to stress and push that any higher. Uh, so we concluded our test on the 11th and then brought the new side back on. But it was a, a good showing on, on the new, new side uh, after the filter rehabilitation project. We did try a second test on the old side uh, to see if we could uh, get better efficiency due to the changes in lake water temperature. This was interrupted on the second day of the test due to finding out that the filter four rewash valve was broken at the stem where it connects to the valve. And that valve needs to be opened in order to rewash the filter during a backwash. So knowing that we couldn't do that, it, there was no real way to test the, uh, the, how far we could push the old side of the plant. That is uh, planned to be fixed here in the next week or two. We're waiting for the, from the contractor to uh, get an answer as to when they can come on site to, to fix that. At the end of the month, the contractors were on site for a couple days to uh, finish up the punch list items for the filter rehabilitation project. They were able, able to fix a level sensor for filter number two, uh, the sight glass on the vacuum tank for uh, the new side of the plant, and the drawdown siphons that we were having trouble with, with on filter six, as well as the supplemental uh, backwash valve on uh, the new side of the plant. Next month, we're looking to get our switch gear repaired, still waiting on the contractors from that uh, due to uh, some shipment delays. We, like I said, uh, for the Paul unit, we plan on putting that online as soon as we review those, uh, what they sent back to us in regards to the samples. And we are also starting our annual uni unidirectional flushing here in June that will run through the month of October. Any questions? I've got a couple. Mm -hmm. um, first off, since you went ahead and touched on the flushing, I know um, I've gotten several emails on it. Can you just uh, explain about the flushing program for Laverne and um, how ours works specific to us? Specific to us, we, what, we, uh, what we like, or we have a state approved flushing program where we go out, flush uh, multiple hydrants at, at a time, going around starting from the plant and going around the city to uh, pull the water from the plant and pull it throughout the system in order to move the water around, especially in the dead end areas. Okay. Okay. And how long does the flushing program last? Uh, it'll, it'll run from June and through uh, the month of October is what, okay. is what our plan is. And then you mentioned the Paul unit coming back online. Yes, sir. That's a good thing. I've not heard that being back online yeah. for quite some time. So um, I'm very excited to hear that. As are we. Um, talk to me a little bit about the, the customer service calls that y'all have had. Yeah, we had, uh, I believe we had five customer service calls, all for uh, low water pressure. Um, those are, they mainly come down to the uh, pressure reducing valves that they have in their yard. So they typically fail close, which limits the amount of pressure that they have. Okay. okay. And that's the, the customer's responsibility in order to repair that. We go out there, we try, we test their, their pressure. We're not allowed physically to touch the valves, but uh, we, we help them out as best as we possibly can when we go out there for those complaints. Okay, that was my concern because I, I can see here in the report, it just says all were contacted, there's no further issues. Yeah. So now if, if, if anyone has any concerns about their water, whether it's related to, to water pressure, 
color, smells, where do they call for that? They would call the water treatment plant. The phone number is 615-793-6536. Uh, I almost gave out my work cell phone number, which you guys can have that too, but. Does anyone else have any questions? The, uh, the, uh, as the, as the, uh, the lake's up to just about summer pool and we ain't had no heavy rains lately, uh, the turnover of the lake, how does, how does that really affect the water and, and anything extra y'all do to, to uh, make up for that? I know in the past, uh, the turnover of the lake mm -hmm. had a lot to do with, uh, with the, you know, the intake of the water. Yes, sir. So, so this last weekend, we're not sure if the, the lake started turning over or if it was a little bit of rain we got Friday night. Uh, what we did, we did have to make some adjustments uh, to the coagulant. Uh, so the, the coagulant demand will tell us if the lake is turning over the increase in iron and manganese levels. So we, we monitor those on a, you know, four hour basis to, to give us an idea of what tests or excuse me, what, what we need to do to change dosages if those are affected, if those numbers are elevated, I should say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Back to flushing. Is there any thing particular that you do different when you're flushing, like a cul-de-sac as opposed to a straight line? There was a, I got an email, I don't know if you all got them or not, uh, some concern about the way they do the cul-de-sacs. I didn't know if there was a difference. Anything special you do, or is it all just in line with everything else? It, I mean, without, I don't know what you can say about the email, but is it where, where the water's pushed or, I mean, because we always in regards to where the water goes or just how we pull the water is that what you mean like how the hydrant is actually flushed or time or did you get the email i i, I did from the carols and um they, their concern yeah. was as far as flushing on dead end lines mm -hmm. like your cul-de-sacs yeah. versus uh flushing on just a straight line road as far as if there's any difference in how they do that the frequency of it that that sort of thing to do as they said it's uh to, to push out um any sediments and pull in any fresh water. Yeah, so the, the whole goal of the flushing is to, is to rid the line of anything that could be built up or any of the stagnant water. So just keep the water moving. That's the goal throughout the entire system, through, from beginning to end through the So whenever uh, you're doing flush outs, yes. you, you do everywhere. You don't just like not go into a cul-de-sac for no reason, you, you do everything. No, those, those are the specific areas we want to hit are the cul-de-sacs that are dead ends because those are the trouble areas. Okay. So with those, are the, those are where the water's moving the, the least, so we want to make sure that it's the freshest. So the, the question that, that I know the Carol's opposed to me, I, I would, wouldn't be surprised if they posted it to other people, um, and I know I've had some conversations with Dwayne Lowry about mm -hmm. it, is when we have our flushing program and we have done the unidirectional flushing that the state has approved um, during those months, the months that we're not flushing, mm -hmm. how does that affect the water? Um, and uh, is that something that we should look at or not? That's what we're in, in the works of doing. Uh, we are checking the chlorine residuals. We, we do 40 to 60 bacteriological samples around the city every month. So that tells us at, at every single one of those sites, we take a, a chlorine sample that lets us know what, what the chlorine is in that area. And every single day that we take those, we take three samples, three day, or three samples five days a week. And every day we take a distribution sample and that's from a dead end area. So that lets us know what the dead end is, what, what the water quality of that, of that dead end is, whether it's a cul-de-sac or, you know, just a, you, typically it's cold sack but that lets us know what what the water quality is in that area and if there's anything we need to address at that time we we do so okay. any other questions on page six of your report talk to us a bit about the potassium oxidation dramatic big difference between yeah. 2020 and 2021 Could you explain that please sir that's going to be the the manganese levels mainly in the in the lake at that time that are going to change the, the chemical dosages of what we use. So when you see drastic changes, it's typically due to the conditions of the lake. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. 
Moving on to old business, first reading ordinance 2021-04, an ordinance to amend the City of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 32, parcel 4, and tax map 29, parcels 40 and 41, consisting of approximately 226.35 acres located adjacent to the intersection of Blair Road and Waldron Road from an R1 low-density residential zoning district to a PDR, Planned Density Residential Zoning District. On March 2nd, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen sent this back to the Planning Commission. It was deferred at the March 30th, 2021 and April 27th, 2021 Planning Commission meetings. On May 25th, 2021, the Planning Commission gave an unfavorable recommendation. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to deny. Have a motion to deny. Is there a second? Seeing no second, that motion fails. I open the floor back up for a motion. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alderman Coates. Discussion? Yes, sir. I open the floor up. Now, instead of a discussion, I want to address some of the things that were said. Is that doable or, or not? Well, this would be the time for us to, to discuss any aspects of this. So this would be a discussion between the board, not with the audience. All right. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to just on, on the on the motion, we I think it's best that we include the concept plan book and the development agreement as far as the approval of the ordinance to ensure that it's all encompassed in, in one one vote. Okay, so you're suggesting an amendment? Amendment is to say acceptance of the ordinance or the approval of ordinance 2021-04 for the rezoning of uh, to the PDR from R1 and also include the approval of the concept plan book and development agreement. Okay, so Vice Mayor No, will you, would you Nobody agree? My... No, if this, is, if this is just an amendment, we would, um, you would amend it, there would be a second, there'd be a vote on that amendment, and then we would vote on the final grouping. So is that, do you want to amend your motion to that? I will amend it. And I'll move to the second. Okay, um, all in favor of the amending, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, so now we have um, a motion and a second on the amended motion. Is there any discussion? Yeah, uh, I'd like to say one thing, you know, uh, you know, uh, the 15 years I've been on the council, we have basically kept with the, the, that part of the city, single family dwellings. And when, you, when we rezone this multiple family or whatever they want to call it, that's going to open the door that uh, every development that comes in over there is going to want the same. And, uh, you know, the, the single family that's, that people is enjoyed for the last 15 or 20 years, it's, it's going to be out the door. You know, every development that comes in front of the that the city is going to ask for some kind of uh, adjustment, uh, you know, and, and Laverne was trying to kind of set up on the population of, of 50,000. Well, if you, if you up the, 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 the housing, that's going to up the, uh, the, the number of people when it maxes out. And you say, yeah, we're going to spend 17,000, I mean, 17 million dollars to upgrade stuff. Uh, the, a lot of that upgrade probably didn't, don't need to be done unless we rezone it. So we're actually spending taxpayers' money to, to, to fund the, uh, the, the developers to come in to, to add more to it. Walden Road, yes, it needs widening, widening. Uh, but it's it's like the schools, you know. We get we're gonna get more people. We're gonna need no sc more schools. And I was told by the school board when I was mayor, I met with the t two school board members, and they said it was no schools planned in Laverne and Smyrna for the next five years. And this was like almost four years ago. We're gonna spend 17 million dollars of taxpayers' money. That's and we're going to open the door for multifamily on that end of the town. Uh, this, this will be uh, 
go down in history is is the is the is the turning point of 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 end of a uh, single family on that end of town. Thank you. Alden Waldron, where are you getting the 50,000 mark? I've read through our city charter and our municipal code and it does not mention that there's any planned cap. Where, where, where are you getting that information from? A few years back, uh, it, was, it, was, it was estimated that Laverne would build out to 50,000 in population. Bruce, you might remember it. Uh, it was about 10 years ago, it was a bill out of uh, 50,000, it might have changed, but that was doing, when we talked about it back then, might have been 10, 8 or 10 years ago, and that was estimated on the other side of uh, the interstate being single family. Now, your multifamily is going gonna, gonna to up the, the population. Yeah, I, I don't remember those exact numbers. Uh, I know we had planned for the build out, you know, in regards to the water treatment plant, and that sort of thing, but I don't remember any specific maximum was, amount. Fifty thousand. Um, it's it was. We spoke about it a number of times. It just wasn't no time. They said the build out at that time, uh, the way the zoning was, should should be around fifty thousand people. It's it should be in <clears throat> in the minute somewhere. I would have to look. I don't know. But anyway, going back to it, it's you know. Uh, if, if we let uh, BRS do it, the next one coming in, they definitely going to ask for it. And, uh, you know, the, the cat's out of the bag. And, and y'all the ones that's going to let the cat out of the bag. Oh, as far as uh, the 50,000, I don't know who they are. I, I don't know who they is. And as far as the schools go, it, it's not going to matter if we put nice built homes there now or if we uh put r1 homes the 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 schools and the children are the same amount there's there's no difference please you know, quiet gonna, in the boardroom there's going to be very very little difference especially if they kind of concentrate towards the the 55 thing because those people are not going to have kids i'm not saying the numbers are going to be exact but i'm going to say that uh, they're still going to be kids, so the, the schools are are uh, are definitely an issue. But well, I think they'll be fine in the long run. Well, Vice Mayor, no, I actually had a conversation with Tammy Sharp, who's one of our current school board representatives uh, for Laverne. What she'd said is that um, if the population increases for Rock Springs Elementary, because that that seems to be a lot of concern, is is that school, especially with the new addition to it, that if they needed to as far as change that if it got to the point of overcrowding they would wind up rezoning further into Smyrna those they would take those students and rezone them further south so Laverne students would still be going there I know that's been a big concern well, a lot of the Laverne students on the other side of the states go to Stutz Creek that's in, that's definitely in the, the county of Smyrna but I was told over three years ago by two of the school members board members there was no schools planned for Smyrna or Laverne for the next five years and that was probably pushing four years ago and I, I agree with that I've had the school board director tell me that uh, from his vantage point that it's cheaper for him to bus students so while we just he and I disagree on that I, I think building would be great that's that falls into his sphere we don't have uh, control over the schools is there any other questions, comments, or discussion? Just, just going back to the, the multifamily, you know, uh, for up to this point, you know, we've been able to, to basically keep uh, that side of town single family. And, uh, you know, like uh, President Roosevelt said, uh, December 7th will go down in history. Now, this date might go down in history is the, is the date that Laverne opened the door to, for multifamily uh, drillings on the other side of the interstate. You know, uh, I don't know how many times I have been in the rezoning and I don't care where, what town, what area it is in, nobody wants nothing rezoned. And then, and, and Graham, uh, uh, all of y'all in the past has been dead against rezoning. And uh, you know, I think all y'all campaigned on, on, on not rezoning. And uh, 
you know, again, you quite pleasing the boardroom. Y'all can look these people in the eye and lie to them. It's like my uncle will say, if you're going to lie to these people, be honest about it. Alderman Waldron, if you don't mind me asking, the, uh, you, you mentioned that this would open up the doors to multifamily on that side. There is already multifamily, though, on that side, is there not? It hadn't, hadn't been nothing rezoned over there in, a, in a quite a while. But, but my question still stands. It, there already is multifamily over there. Is that correct? It ain't been none over there in quite a while. So that, I would take that as a yes, that there is. So it's not something new. It's something that, that already exists over there. You know, but you can put this is a, you know, sir, like my, I'm speaking. Like my uncle. You could put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. You know? Well, you, you, you keep using that term for multiple things, but at the end of the day, it, that already exists. Now, this isn't multifamily. This isn't apartments. This isn't, um, this isn't townhomes. So you can call it what you would like for political points. I know you, you said this was political suicide whenever you met with the developers. So, um, I mean, end of the day, again, it is what it is as far as our individual viewpoints. With that, I'll call the, the roll. Alderman Waldron. No. Alderwoman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. I vote aye. First reading passes. Moving on to second reading ordinance 2021-12, an ordinance to amend the 2020-2021 fiscal year general fund budget. Need a motion to approve or deny? A motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? I second. Second from Vice Mayor No. Any discussion? Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderwoman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. And I vote aye. Second reading passes. Second reading ordinance 2021-13, an ordinance of the city of Laverne, Tennessee, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? A second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. Alderman Waldron. No. Alderwoman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. And I vote aye. Second reading passes. Moving on to the consent agenda. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a Make motion. Make a motion to approve. Have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? A second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The consent agenda passes. Moving on to first reading ordinance 2021-14, an ordinance to amend Title IX, Chapter 1 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding transient vendors. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? Our second. Any discussion? Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. And I vote aye. First reading passes. Resolution number 2021-15. Initial resolution authorizing the issuance of not, uh, not to exceed $17,750,000 general obligation bond of the city of Laverne, Tennessee. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? Second. Second from Vice Mayor No. Any discussion? Seeing none. Alderman Waldron. No. Alderwoman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. And I vote aye. Resolution passes. Resolution 2021-16, a resolution authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds of the city of Laverne, Tennessee in aggregate principal amount of not to exceed $17,750,000 in one or more series making provision for the issuance, sale, and payment of said bonds, establishing the terms thereof and the disposition of proceeds therefrom, and providing for the levy of taxes for the payment of principal of premium, if any, and interest on the bonds. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderman Coates. Is there a second? A second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. Is there any discussion? 
I'll say this is one that, that I don't think any of us like, but at the end of the day, um, everyone at this table all agreed, whether it was at our workshop or at our, uh, our regular BOMA workshop or our budget workshops, all agreed that widening Waldron Road, uh, providing for additional uh, space for our police department, our fire department, and looking at uh, Old Nashville Highway, all is important things for us. So, I think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be an investment in our city, and, and you know, anytime you invest money and make money is a, is a big thing, as opposed to just borrowing it. But since I've been in Laverne, it seems like we the city has done nothing but band-aided stuff, for lack of better words, just put a band-aid on it a little bit at a time. I think it's time that that. Uh, I think it's time that we start moving vertical. Start stop being horizontal all the time. I, you know, uh, the last administration had all that money and, and nothing got done. Let's do something. And if we have to spend some money to invest some money, I think it'll be good for everybody, especially our emergency services. And I know we've had uh, several residents reach out about infrastructure improvements, wanting to see roads improved, roads widen. Yeah. And there's been a lot of uh, concern about Old Nashville Highway, about Waldron Road. So it, it's it's starting to move the uh, the needle on those. I mean, it's very important for the city to move forward and the, the, the widening of South Walden Road is, is key. And, and importantly so for the citizens, you know, we have the revenue to cover these these bonds as they come through. That's, that's what my important exactly. thing was, that we have the coverage, we have the income. So let's move forward, let's be progressive and, and get this road widened as well as look at the other projects we looked at at the workshop to get this city moving forward. Absolutely. With that, Alderman Waldron. No. Alderman Honeycutt. Aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor, no. Aye. I vote aye. Resolution passes. Moving on to Resolution 2021-17, a resolution authorizing the issuance of approximately $12,715,000 in aggregate principal amount of water and sewer revenue and tax refunding bonds of the City of Laverne, Tennessee, making provision for the issuance, sale, and payment of said bonds, establishing the terms thereof, and disposition of proceeds therefrom, and providing for the levy of taxes for payment of principal of premium, if any, and interest of the bonds. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Vice Mayor No. Is there a second? A second. Second from Alderwoman Honeycutt. Is there any discussion? Everyone should have received um, the uh, email from the state where the Comptroller's Office has reviewed this and um, the total amount uh, uh, that would benefit the city um, was that 537 or 532 thousand mm. dollars 532 so um, by doing this with the interest rate reduction so any questions seeing none Alderman Waldron yes Alderman Honeycutt aye Alderman Coates aye Vice Mayor no aye and I vote aye. Resolution passes. Moving on to resolution 2021-18, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. Need a motion to approve or deny? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Alderwoman Honeycutt, our second. Alderman Waldron. Aye. Alderwoman Honeycutt. <coughs> aye. Alderman Coates. Aye. Vice Mayor No. Aye. And I vote aye. Resolution passes. Moving on to appoint or remove board and committee members. First, we have the Local Emergency Planning Commission committee. We have two vacancies. Um, Laura Davidson has resigned um, as the chief of Box 100, and Christopher Buck is requested to be placed on this committee in her stead. Um, and then we have the police chief position, which will remain open. So I will appoint. Mr. Buck to that board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. That passes. Moving on to Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. We've got one term vacant. Um, 
we have been advertising this position on Channel 3 and on Facebook. Um, we've received applications for a Dylan Forbes and Kristen Morlock. I will appoint Kristen Morlock to that position. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. And then moving on to the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee. We've got two terms vacant. Um, terms of Elizabeth Dandler and Jennifer Webb are vacant. Um, this has been advertised on Channel 3 and on Facebook. Currently have one application, which is Anthony Honeycutt. I'll appoint him to that board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I abstain. Okay. Moving on to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Waldron. Like I said in the workshop, the weather's warming up. Don't forget about the pets. Uh, fresh water and shade. Uh, as the w summer gets on, check on the elderly people. Uh, make sure they uh, they they got a fan or air conditioner. Uh, it's organizations that will aid them in, in that uh, in that need if they if they need. They need to check on your neighbors. June is National Health Awareness Month. It's a good time if you've been putting off going to getting a checkup to do it. Um, glad to see Donna. He's, he's got a full summer schedule for, for the library. And uh, just uh, hope everybody made it good through the holidays. You know, we had a tragic accident on Percy Priest Lake with a plane. Keep, keep all the people that, that lost in, in the prayers. Seven people perished. That was, it's a difficult deal. Um, and uh, hope everybody uh, wears the, uh, the, the weather that's coming up tonight and tomorrow. Hope, hope it dodges Middle Tennessee. Thank you. Alderman Woman Hennigan. Um, I wanted to touch on a couple of things. Um, like Alderman Waldron said, the weather is getting warmer, so I wanted to touch on pool safety. Um, I've seen already within Middle Tennessee quite a few young children that have drowned already in pools. You know, if you're not aware of, of a lot of pool safety information, please look it up. Please watch the little ones around the water. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that today is Tennessee's 225th birthday. We gained statehood back on June 1st in 1796. I'm proud to be a Tennessean, proud to be a, in Laverne, although I'm not a Tennessee Vols fan. Go Gators. That's enough <laughs> for you that on open. that one. I, I left that open for y'all, for you and Steve. That's a tough one to follow. <laughs> By all means, on my coats. I'd just like to say to the citizens that were here this evening and listening tonight, sometimes you, you Sitting up here, some tough decisions you have to make. But as I've learned growing through the time on the Planning Commission and Bozer and, and the Mayor Alban Board, sometimes you've got to make decisions that you think are right for the city. And that's what you put in this position to do. And moving forward of, of borrowing money, again, another tough decision, but we have the funds to do it, and we have to support our fire and police and emergency services to give us the, the, the safety that we need as residents. And, and I appreciate their effort. And I'm looking forward to moving forward and getting the city moving forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Vice Mayor now. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to tell the, the citizens that's probably listening at home again, especially from this Arbor Ridge thing, as Alderman Coates said, it's a tough decision. You have to sit up here and you have to make tough decisions. The things that were said against me tonight said it was personal, not business. And the, uh, the lady said it's very much personal. I wasn't talking about that particularly. I was talking about up here making a decision. You have to sit up here and make a decision that is business, it's not personal. You know, if, if I had a thousand friends that lived out in that area, I still have to make a business decision up here. It's not got anything to do with being personal. One gentleman called me, uh, I sounded like his daddy I sat up here for seven months and listened to all of this, uh, everybody opposing. I sat, I listened, I listened very good. I took the emails, uh, I seen things on social media. Uh, I, I dealt with BRS, 
I, I dealt with the opposition. I dealt with economics. All I did was, was it was my turn to speak. And if I sounded like your daddy or if I sounded like I was scolding you, I don't know what to tell you. I was just simply speaking like you did when it was your turn. We sat and listened to you. You spoke, so we spoke. I got an email today about Walmart, and the gentleman apologized. He thought I owned it, or thought I owned the land. Because, and the reason I'm saying that is, is it makes the point that there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of things that are, that are not always out there. But again, to refer back to Alderman Coates, it's a tough up here. It's a tough decision. And I have to believe in heart of hearts, just like some of the people that was for this, that's going to be good. It's going to be good for the community as a whole. It's going to be good for the city as a whole. And it's going to be good for the citizens. Getting back to what Alderman uh, Waldron said, we open this up and everybody's going to be asking. There's a difference between asking and getting approved. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Well, um, first want to thank uh, our state senator, Don White, for coming and presenting the, uh, the city and Officer Darby with the um, joint resolution. Do want to warn everyone to keep an eye out on the weather. Uh, storms for the next few days should be very, very nasty. Um, hope to see everyone out on June 11th for Tom and Jerry at uh, Movies in the Park. I'm sure uh, the vice mayor and I will have a uh, some uh, announcement duties as we go through there and there's always some fun giveaways. Um, wanna thank everyone who, um, who has lost, th thank, the family who, thank the families of those that, um, that have been lost serving this country in the military. Uh, Memorial Day was yesterday. Um, many people think that it is a time for finding good sales or a day off barbecuing with the family. And it's really about those people that um, served and ultimately gave their lives for this country. So thank you if you're a family member. Thank you for that sacrifice um, out there. Um, moving on to Arbor Ridge. I, I know I've said this to other people, but I live less than a mile and a half away from this development myself. So I will be directly impacted. And... If I didn't genuinely believe that this was something good for the city, I wouldn't support it. Just quite frankly, I wouldn't. At the same time, um, with the bond, we just um, we just approved the resolution for bonding out to support our emergency personnel and to support improving our infrastructure. And you can't sit there and say you support our police and fire, you support improving our infrastructure that grossly needs it and at the same time say we're not going to fund it it's one or the other either you do or you don't so uh, otherwise to, to make those comments it's like putting lipstick on a pig with that call this meeting adjourned <laughs>